purposes, I now recognize the distinguished gentleman from Colorado, the ranking member of this subcommittee, Mr. Buck, for his opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am pleased to co-sponsor this important legislation with you, and I thank you for your collegiality and focus on bipartisanship. In the 1990s, 4% of the world's population used the internet. Today, that number is nearly 60%. The internet is a tool with incredible opportunities for expanding freedom and democracy in America and around the world. But we need to confront the reality that multinational corporations are sabotaging Americans' access to information and advancing authoritarian regimes' efforts to manipulate the internet for oppression. When the internet was first developed, its potential as a bastion of democracy was easily recognized. President Reagan famously said, technology will make it increasingly difficult for the state to control the information its people receive. The Goliath of totalitarianism will be brought down by the David of the microchip. We are now seeing big tech making content-related decisions for people around the world, including here in the United States. What content is available to a free citizenry is driven and shaped by the political agendas of these tech corporations, not consumer preferences. We're not seeing a systemic problem with people shutting themselves out of the public discourse as critics feared. Instead, the tech titans censoring material they disagree with. And they're able to do this because they have achieved monopoly status in the market. Their monopoly has given them the power to police the marketplace of ideas and dictate what consumers can see. This problem is exacerbated by small and medium market news sources disappearing because monopolies are squeezing them out of the market. Companies like Google and Facebook have decimated small and medium market news sources by cutting their ad revenues. In 2010, Google publicly disclosed how much of the ad revenue they shared with publishers. At the time, publishers were earning almost 70% of the revenue from content ads, which are the ads you see on a publisher's website. In 2020, the Association of National Advertisers estimated that publishers are now only taking home between 30 and 40% of the ad revenue. <laughs> That's a huge decrease, and we have seen the adverse effects of that change. Since 2004, the United States has lost approximately 2,100 newspapers, which accounts for a quarter of the nation's total. In 2004, there were almost 9,000 newspapers, but by the end of 2019, that number dropped to 6,700. More than 200 of the nation's 3,143 counties and parishes no longer have a local paper. And the newsrooms that are closing are mostly in small rural communities. Similarly, local radio and TV stations are also disappearing at an alarming rate. Study after study shows that Americans are more trusting of local news outlets and local reporters, and with good reason. There is more diversity of viewpoint in the small and medium market outlets. That diversity allows space for more voices, and it benefits our democracy. My concerns about the decline in local news outlets are not based on some nostalgia for a former era. The robust exchange of ideas has always been important in this country, but it is now essential as conservatives seek to battle cancel culture and maintain a voice in the public square. Many of my colleagues advocate doing nothing in this area because we should just let the market work. From this perspective, newspapers and local TV and radio stations dying is just the result of competition in a healthy marketplace. They lean on the idea of creative destruction and Darwinian competition. I value the market, economic freedom, and capitalism, but I also value freedom of speech and freedom of the press. I want to see these bedrock American values preserved for future generations. We are seeing the failures of antitrust policy at work with big tech. Big tech not only controls the news market because it controls the digital advertising market, it also exercises gatekeeper control over speech. All Americans should be concerned. We are just starting to see the results of tech titan control over the news and how it does not, and it does not bode well for future generations. Congress sat idly by as these platforms became monopolies. We cannot sit by and let them become the public square, too. We cannot let them become the arbiters of truth and the wielders of government-like power. These companies track and seek to run our lives through their technologies and algorithms. Big tech companies have become digital kings, and they represent precisely the kind of political power the antitrust laws are designed to tackle. This bill is a step in the right direction to dethroning those digital kings. It will give publishers and broadcasters a four-year exemption from the antitrust laws so they can more effectively bargain with Google and Facebook. It is not a subsidy for outlets, but rather a leveling of the, of the playing field in favor of democracy and free expression. 
Mr. Chairman, I also want to make sure that through this legislation, we are not creating unintended consequences that will end up harming those we seek to help. For example, we want to make sure that news outlets involved in negotiations are not incentivized to harm the interests of competitor news groups not at the table. Likewise, we want to ensure that Google is not harming those it hasn't negotiated with by burying them several pages back in search results. I am pleased that this bill gives small town outlets like the Greeley Tribune and the Fort Morgan Times and conservative outlets like Breitbart and the Federalist a chance to negotiate together and claw back some of their hard-earned advertising dollars from Google and Facebook. Advertising dollars are the lifeblood of these outlets earned through hard work and dedicated reporting. Mr. Chair, I appreciate the opportunity to work together and I yield back.